and we're here at uh, Computex 2016 and uh, yesterday you had the press conference for Thunder X2. So who are you? I'm Gopal Hegde, I'm the VP GM for the Data Center Processor Group at Cavium. And uh, this is Thunder X2, this is uh, an upgrade for the biggest, uh, most powerful ARM processor in the world, right? Yes. So how much faster is it now? So Thunder X2 is roughly 2 to 3x higher performance compared to Thunder X1. How can you do that? We can do that by essentially what we are doing is we are redesigning the core, processor core used in Thunder X2 from scratch where we are adding a number of new capabilities such as fully out of order execution, it's a multi-issue core, we are using the 40 nanometer FinFET technology which allows us to improve overall frequency. So we are targeting a frequency of 2.4 to 2.8 gigahertz in normal mode, 3 gigahertz in turbo mode of operation. So a combination of a higher core count, Thunder X2 is 54 cores compared to Thunder X which is a 48 core, higher frequency and fully out of order, multi-issue, next generation core gives us the ability to deliver roughly 2 to 3x the performance of Thunder X for a wide variety of applications with Thunder X2. So now it's 54 cores per SOC? Yes. You can still have two or more maybe on the board? You can have two SOCs per board interconnected using our next generation uh, processor interconnect, uh, Cavium coherent processor interconnect technology that delivers 2.5x higher coherent bandwidth between the two sockets compared to Thunder X. So there's a faster interconnect technology? Yes. Where is it located? It's, it's the interface between the two processors of Thunder X which allows to create a more of a cache coherent architecture in a, in a dual socket mode. So it's a chip that's somewhere else on the PCB, it's not an SOC? No, it's integrated on Thunder X. You don't need any other chip. Not only that, Thunder X also integrates all the I.O. required for data center, whether it is network I.O. We have next generation of network I.O. 25 gigabit, so we support 25, 50, uh, 100 gigabit. In, and in addition to supporting 10 and 40 gigabit, which Thunder X1 supported, we have SATA interfaces, we have PCIe, so everything you need to build a next generation server for the data center, Thunder X2 integrates in a single piece of silicon. So it's custom ARM design, right? It's a custom core designed uh, by Cavium, yes. So how, what did you learn from Thunder X to Thunder X2 in, in the way you make custom ARM? So what we learned with Thunder X1 has been very successful in a set of scale out application where application set can be highly parallelized so that can take advantage of our 48 cores that can take advantage of our integrated network and storage IO and applications that can benefit from our integrated accelerators we get significantly better performance what we learned is that there were a set of applications that were that require high single thread performance and we knew going into thunder x1 that was not our target set of applications with thunder x2 we widen our application base to applications that can benefit from high single thread performance of thunder x1 applications like web search real time analytics uh, data warehousing type of applications, massively parallel databases and things like that. So uh, the parallel stuff is quite important and you have so many cores, right? Yes. And you add more SOCs on the, on the board and you have a rack with hundreds of SOCs and you, you have to write server software that's very good with parallel stuff. No. But now it's even, it's not as much required. No, no. So basically the way it works is that multi-core architecture has been around in the industry for a long time. Uh, right, so you have Intel CPUs today in the market that support 12 cores, 14 cores, 18 cores, 20 cores, 24 cores, etc. Right, so with so the software infrastructure can take advantage of the multi multiple cores that are in a processor. Okay, so we don't have to do anything new for the, from a software development standpoint to take advantage of multiple cores, and all that is leveraged on Thunder. What Thunder does is that. We take the num core count to another level. We have a lot more cores that allows applications to scale even more than what is possible with today's uh, CPUs out there in the market. So uh, this one, the Thunder X2 now is, uh, is even more ready for the cloud? Thunder X2 
improves performance for all the applications Thunder X1 services today, whether it is cloud storage, analytics, cloud compute type of applications, etc. In addition to all those applications, we now broaden the set of applications that we can service with Thunder X2, the applications that require high single thread performance, which were not uh, serviceable by Thunder X1. Is this one of the things companies like, I'm just going to mention some names, right? Google, uh, Facebook, Amazon, uh, Alibaba, all that, they really need that? So uh, all those companies actually have a highly scale out workloads that are parallelizable. With Thunder X1, we can actually service a lot of those workloads and we are uh, into a number of customers who are actually taking advantage of the capabilities in our current Thunder X processor for a wide variety of workloads. However, these customers also have workloads like for example, one of the large workloads at Google is the web search application that we can actually target much better with Thunder X2. However, there are workloads like storage and analytics, etc., which we can service today, which we are servicing today with Thunder X1. Whoa, do you feel the earthquake? Oh just a second. Just, uh, we're gonna resume, just say, oh, it's moving a little bit. No, hold on, we're okay. Oh my goodness. It's normal, it's every day here, right? <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, cool, it's moving. Okay, let's, uh, let's continue. So, so uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, you were saying that, I mean, I mean, how's the adoption of Thunder X1? Did you, uh, I mean, has it been kind of like a test chip for Thunder X2? Like no. people are testing or they are, are they really deploying mass massively? Yes, so if you look at Thunder X1, Thunder X1 has, uh, has a lot of market traction today in the market. We have well over 20 different ODM platforms. If you go inside, you look at platforms, we have uh, 1U, 2U, rack mount, blade, density optimized platforms based on Thunder X1, which are yeah. developed by yeah. leading ODMs and OEMs here. So if you look here, you have platforms on this wall, on this wall here. Can we check this one out? What sure, is this? Sure, So, this is a platform for high performance computing developed by a company called E4 Computer Engineering in Europe, okay? What you see here is a Tesla GPU, which is integrated here. You have an InfiniBand adapter. This is for high performance computing application based on Thunder X. It's a dual socket Thunder X platform. What's the advantage of uh, combining the, G the NVIDIA GPU with uh, your ARM? So NVIDIA GPU is delivers very good floating point performance and it's very important for high performance computing applications. So for high-end HPC applications, combining Thunder X capabilities, which is more of a scale-out capabilities with a GPU, which gives you ability to deliver a very high, uh, uh, you know, high performance computing type of performance for a floating point uh, applications, you get the best of the both worlds. So with Thunder X2 and this, it's going to be 2.5 times yes, faster? Yes, absolutely. Everything, everything. everything here is going to be 2.5 yes. or 3 times faster, yes. right? Yes, yes, absolutely. Let's check some more examples. So this one here, so you have multiple platforms from Gigabyte. This is, uh, I'm sorry, this one here is a Gigabyte platform. It's a 2U, 2 socket platform, um, what you call uh, in the EATX form factor, right? This is a very popular form factor. One of the words, this form factor, a 2U, 2 socket, is roughly uh, 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 with 12 hard drives here or a, uh, in a 3.5 inch hard drive configuration or 24 hard drives in a 2.5 inch configuration is very popular for a lot of uh, Hadoop type of deployments, okay? Like uh, big data type of deployments, cloud storage deployment, cloud compute type of environment. It's a very popular form factor, okay? This one here, uh, this is a different version. This one has 12 three and a half inch hard drives. Okay. This one has 24 two and a half inch hard drives. One of the benefits of Thunder X, what you will notice is that the customer has to just redesign the motherboard. Okay. The chassis, the power supply, everything is what they use today in the market, and that enables them to get to market quickly with lower R&D spend, and also be able to leverage the cost of a high volume chassis power supply infrastructure uh, which makes the overall platform very cost effective for our end customers. How hard is it to design those motherboards? It's actually very straightforward. Typically our customers go from uh, design to production in about six months. Okay, so it includes uh, the complete design, the bringing up the board, 
read, uh, running through full testing and then running the production. Cavium provides full set of collaterals, design guides, tools, etc. in order for the ODMs to go through this process in a very efficient manner. As you can see, a lot of these guys have done uh, taken several platforms based on Thunder to production. This one here is a platform with the GPU from Gigabyte. Okay, yeah. what you see here is this is the uh, G220 T60, which is the GPU server from Gigabyte. Okay. okay, what you see here is a Ceph node from Gigabyte. What you notice is just one motherboard, and you have a 410 gig, 140 gig interface. There is no NIC card here. Okay, all the ports are built onto the chip. Okay. There is no HBA here. All the storage uh, int interfaces are built on Thunder X. So you don't need any separate HBA. And this is a very cost effective node for cloud storage applications. It's a very popular workload on Thunder. This one is a, uh, essentially a 1U, 1 socket Thunder platform. Very low cost. It's pretty popular in the cloud. Okay. Pretty popular? What do you mean by pretty popular? So people deploy this to uh, just to provide uh, cloud uh, virtual machine access. 48 cores, you can support a large number of VMs, integrated networking, integrated storage. What it means is that each VM can have its own NIC, okay, vNIC, and each VM can have its own hard drive, okay, if that is what is needed. All right. So these are platforms from Inventec. Inventec is, as you know, is one of the leading ODMs here, based on Thunder. Yeah. And these are two different form factors. Okay. So uh, is uh, Thunder X2 going to be a uh, pin to pin compatible or? No, it's no? not going to be pin compatible because it's based on the 14 nanometer FinFET technology. However, the we are taking all the learnings in terms of design collaterals, design guides, tools, everything we have developed for Thunder X1 will be leverageable for Thunder X2 as well, which simplifies how long it takes for customers to go to production with a Thunder X2 platform. What is this one? This one is what we call a cloud scale rack. One of the one of the interesting things that is happening with a lot of our customers is Cavium provides a lot of technology elements for the data center, right? So we have uh, silicon uh, to, uh, that can be used for top of rack switches, uh, what we call expliant, and it's a full software defined networking switch, SDN switch. We uh, enable a number of servers based on ThunderX technology, compute servers, storage servers, etc. We enable appliances, okay, which uh, can be used for security uh, applications, etc. So this one is a rack that is fully powered by Cavium technology, based on platforms that are developed by our OEM and ODM customers. Okay, so we call it a cloud scale rack. All these platforms actually work together with each other in order to deliver a pretty compelling value proposition to our customers. For example, the fabric in our servers works with the top of rack fabric in order to provide uh, fully optimized traffic management, quality of service, VM level monitoring capabilities. All these servers can be provisioned using OpenStack. You can run more compute nodes or more storage nodes depending on what workload is required. Our liquid security appliance provides VM level uh, security and key management. It's fully cloud ready. And our liquid IO adapter which is in this server can be used to enable NVMe fabrics and several other uh, offload technologies that are required for the data center. So this is uh, uh, right here, you call it this cloud scale rack. rack. And as you can see, it includes all Cavium powered uh, technology for a data center. Okay. So what you can do is customers can now build, up, build platforms based on Cavium silicon solutions and deploy entire data center okay, using those platforms built by our OEM and ODM partners for their data center So you, you, you provide the whole rack? We don't provide, provide the I mean, whole you, rack, you provide we provide the silicon, we silicon provide the technology. For all of it? All of it, yes. So you, the whole range of uh, server stuff? Server, networking, okay, network IO, security, switching, ethernet switching, we provide all those technology building blocks. And so is this the, the best rack in the world? And is it, how much better is it gonna be with Thunder X2? So with Thunder X2, we deliver uh, higher performance on the server side. We uh, enable a wider range of applications on uh, with the Thunder X2 technology. So all all those will result in, and we support next generation IO interconnects, okay, which improve the overall throughput. 
uh, IO throughput for each of the servers. So combination of all these delivers substantial benefits to our customers. Cavium is one of the very few companies which has all the building blocks required to build an entire data center which can be powered through Cavium technology. So are you jumping from a, a 10 gigabit uh, connections to 100 or? So we're going from, we have multiple uh, interfaces that support 10 gigabit, 25 gigabit, 40 gigabit, 50 gigabit, all the way up to 100 gigabit IO. We support multiples of those interfaces. And Thunder X2. The, Thunder X2, yes. Today with Thunder X1, we support 10 gig and 40 gig IO, uh, all the way up to 100 gig, okay. so. We have the ability to take the I.O. bandwidth, I.O. throughput per server two and a half times what is available in Thunder X1 with the Thunder X2 products. So uh, lots of companies have publicly or secretly been testing Thunder X, right? There are, and, yes. And uh, what, have they, what, what have the response, what, what have they been asking? Are you, are you going to do everything in Thunder X2 that they've so, been asking? A lot of customers have uh, done a lot of work on testing a wide variety of applications on Thunder X1. A number of them are actually deploying the Thunder X1 based server solutions. You see all these platforms developed by leading OEMs and ODMs that are developing these with a specific uh, one or many end users in mind, right? They are not going to uh, spend their money and develop these platforms without having an end customer. So that is really what is going on here. and. Uh, as they deploy Thunder X based products, the way it happens is that they test us for one workload, then they build a rack, they test us for more workloads, and where we are applicable, they start deploying that solution, okay? With, there were some applications, many applications, which were more of a scale out data center type where Thunder X1 is highly suited for. And what we're trying to do is with Thunder X2, address a broader set of applications, especially applications that require high single thread performance, and more uh, memory capacity and higher memory speeds. So high single thread performance is a big deal. High single thread performance is a big deal for some applications. It's not required for all applications. And uh, as we have, uh, uh, and that is what we are trying to uh, target with the Thunder X2. So how is the power consumption, the heat of Thunder X2 compared to Thunder X1? So the power is gonna be in the similar power envelope and we achieve that by going to a 14 nanometer FinFET technology which gives us a significant improvement in power uh, for uh, Thunder X2 and in addition to that we have integrated a sophisticated power management technology onto Thunder X2 which actually allows us to monitor and manage power based on what the workload requires optimizing the power for applications. That sounds good, that sounds like a potential way to even save more power? Absolutely. How much more power could be saved? It depends on the that's application. that's the biggest deal, right? Yes, it is. It depends on the application, depends on what is the peak power consumed by the application, etc. So this looks uh, super nice, super awesome. How soon is Thunder X ready for this? I mean, Thunder, when are you launching? Thunder X is already in production, right? Yeah. And uh, uh, Thunder X has been in production since Q4 of 2015. And Thunder X based platforms are shipping in volume production today. You see a lot of them here from leading OEMs and ODMs. Uh, Thunder X2 will start sampling in uh, Q1 of 2017. So sampling Q1 2017, yes. uh, that's 14 nanometer. That right. means there's some extra challenges in making sure everything is super stable and everything or you For just know exactly how to make it yeah, happen? Yeah, we, we know exactly. 14 nanometer technology is not very uh, new. What we have done is we have done several test chips, etc. So in order to make sure that we understand the nuances with the technology and, and 14 nanometer technology is actually used by other people today to produce products in the market. So we are not the very first one out there with 14 nanometer by uh, any stretch of imagination. Is it possible with Thunder X2 now that Google, Facebook and Amazon, everybody is going to just announce? Are they going to deploy data centers with your chips? That depends on them. Okay, so we sure hope so. We expect, we have a number of customers uh, in, in large data centers who are actually looking at Thunder X1 and we expect the momentum will continue with Thunder X2. And as you uh, do this awesome stuff, the, maybe the best ARM server chips in the world, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what has been Intel's response in the last two, three years? And uh, are they able to, are you just going to totally overtake them? Are you overtaking them to totally? No, no, no. I think, you know, Intel is a very, very large company. They have a huge installed base. They deliver servers all the way from, you know, home all the way to supercomputers, right? What we are playing is in a small part of the server market. It's scale-out compute. It's cloud. 
okay intel is very strong there we are not head to head comparing uh, head to head competing with intel uh, because we are a very small company we are very focused we are focused on set of applications that we are good at and we are focused on winning customer by customer workload by workload so arm is uh, quite bullish about the server market share for 2020 I think they said 20% or yes. 25%. Yes. Uh, are you going to be most of that? What, what, do you, what is your target? How so, many percent of the servers? So we really want to be successful in this space. And we hope that Army is going to get market share, as you mentioned, in the server space. And we hope to be one of the leading vendors uh, delivering ARM server uh, solutions to the market.